guys are yelling like crazy back here. <laughs> it's a little too early for that. I want you to forget what you know about Sicily. It's not at all like they show it in The Godfather or White Lotus. The real Sicily can be found in the markets and narrow streets of small towns like this one. In last week's episode, we landed in Agrigento, a sun-kissed corner of Sicily where few tourists pass through and where my husband Martin spent his teenage summers running through these streets playing soccer with his cousins. Sicilians, they are misunderstood. And I know a thing or two about how that feels. My country of Mexico has been tarnished with reputations of organized crime, causing many around the world to turn a blind eye. But let me share a little secret about places like these. The food is 10 times more delicious. The friendships and families are stronger, and the stories you hear in the news, they're just a fraction of the reality. We love an underdog story, don't we? That's exactly what Sicily is. So if you came to see some travel influencer's glamorized guide to Sicily, that's not what this is. Today we're spending the day with Sicilians, discovering what makes this region of Italy different, and diving into the Sicilian lifestyle. Welcome, Welcome to, to Sicily! Sicily. The scene opens in Agora, a charming pastry shop nestled in the nearby town of Villaggio Mose. Enter my cousin Raimondo. We grab his usual breakfast, a few pistachio-filled pastries, an espresso, and the newspaper of the day. Grazie. So Come diverso il nord del sud? La Sicilia per me è una delle più belle isole d'Italia. È diversa perché la vita in Sicilia è più economica. Poi abbiamo più spiagge più divertimento e viviamo la vita un po' più in maniera rilassata rispetto al nord, che è più caotico come, come lavoro e tutto. Eh, infatti molti, molte persone del nord Italia vengono in Sicilia a passare le loro vacanze estive. E niente, soprattutto per la cucina, in Sicilia si mangia bene, molto molto bene, dolci e eh, tante altre cose. E parliamo di questo, se, parlo, se parlano con i gesti sì, qua la Sicilia. Un po' in tutta Italia, però in Sicilia forse ancora di più. Visto questo? Sì, questo, questo, no, anche questo, sì. È molto comune. Sì, è stesso. Quando, te, quando ti piace qualcosa, cioè ah. vedi buono. Ah. Però questo è universale un po' diciamo. Sì. Però ci sono altri gesti tipici siciliani. Eh, noi parliamo tanto con i gesti, ok? Quindi sin hablar nos entendemos haciendo algo. First cannoli in Sicily. <laughs> and it looks like Juliana already picked up the Italian way of communicating. And talking with your hands makes sense, because with so much food to eat here, your mouth is probably too full to talk anyways. And speaking of food, it's one thing to get food in a restaurant, but it's another to see where it's coming from. So we meet up with my aunt to join her for her trip to the local market. place she loves coming here. And what's so interesting is coming to Italy, I thought I would know all the fruits and vegetables, but there's actually a lot of things here that I've never seen anywhere. Like these round green melon looking things, for example. Martine's aunt asks one of the locals to explain what it's used for. Papamero, insomma, cetriolo, insalata. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Or this wacky looking summer squash called the cacusa. A local explains that she loves to put this in soups. Con un cuchillo cierra la rasca para quitarle la corteza de afuera. La corta pedacitos la la servir con cebolla y patatas y jitomate. Uh, y hace una sopa hervida. Se come freda, señora, se manda freda o calda. Tiepida. The produce here is gorgeous to look at, and we knew we wanted to take something with us, so we asked our new friends what they'd recommend for a snack, and were directed to the island's juicy variety of peaches. My aunt just bought this one, and it's specially from here. You can see it's white, but I hope you guys, I wish you guys could smell it. In Italian it's pesca, in Sicilian it's persica, vero? <laughs> a juicy Sicilian white peach ripened in the sun, this is what I'm talking about. But it's not just produce you can find here. As we walked further, we found secondhand clothing tables with vintage Ralph Lauren button ups for just a euro, linen and blankets for Martine's aunt to stock up on for her bed and breakfast, and fish and cheese sold out of the back of someone's car. 
I'm not sure I would trust car cheese somewhere else in the world, but here you want the car cheese. Trust me. And it wouldn't be a Sicilian market without lots of yelling. These guys are yelling like crazy back here. <laughs> it's a little too early for that. So this market is a great place to come to learn about all the ingredients they use in Sicilian cuisine and it's open every Friday starting at 8 a.m. So come in the morning, grab your produce and uh, make your own meal. But we already have plans for lunch today. My other cousin, Enrico, has a place he wants to take us to try panino con milza. So we meet up with him for the afternoon. Now there's a few ways that you can get around Italy, right? By car, walking, but let's go in a Vespa. That's the way to do it in style. That's right. <laughs> Yay! Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> I felt like uh, I was living in the Lizzie McGuire movie, which Martina is yet to see. Uh, but I'll show him tonight. Uh, after you're 14 years old, you can drive your um, your motorcycle. So everybody, whenever they are 14, they already drive their <laughs> Vespa all around. Sí. Enrico takes us to a place called Antica Panelleria, and I know what's coming. Panino con milza is the dish I've been craving for years. And if I told you what it is, you might be too afraid to try it. Okay, I'll just tell you. It's a sandwich that is typical from Palermo, stuffed with chopped veal long and spleen that have been boiled and then fried in lard. Sounds gross, but it's such a tender meat that melts in your mouth. We're gonna give this delicious panini de milza a try. Now, we're actually making a whole other video solely focused on all the amazing food you can find here in Sicily. It's gonna be a good one. We've had a lot of fun putting that together for you guys over these past few days. But in the meantime, let's eat. We take our paninos to a nearby plaza where Juliana notices my cousin's tattoo. I noticed your tattoo, it's super cool and it's something that I've been seeing all over Sicily. So I was wondering if you could explain what it means. Allora, questa qui, di front, questa qui accanto, nei lati, è la Sicilia. E questo al centro è la testa di Moro. Le teste di Moro rappresentano la Sicilia. È una storia vecchissima. Considerate che la testa di Moro rappresenta proprio il carattere delle persone siciliane. E questo è un Moro arabo. Noi siamo stati conquistati dagli arabi. E quando gli arabi stavano a Palermo c'era questa ragazza che viveva in questa casa segregata perché aveva l'obbligo di stare attenta alle piante e curare la casa. Quindi questa ragazza non poteva uscire. E un giorno vide sto moro arabo che era qui in battaglia e si è innamorata di questo moro. Fatto sta che questo moro ogni giorno passava e vedeva sta ragazza, sta principessa lì nel balcone e rimase innamorata di questa principessa. Si innamorarono e un giorno il moro andò a trovare la principessa. E si innamorarono, stettero insieme e la principessa rimase innamorata a vita del moro. Solo che il moro arabo aveva detto una bugia perché aveva la famiglia in Arabia Saudita e doveva ritornare il giorno dopo quindi la donna siciliana cosa ha fatto? è andata a casa del Moro gli ha tagliato la testa al Moro e ha portato la testa nel suo balcone gli ha tolto l'interiore e gli ha messo la terra con tutti i semi il vaso, basilico, limoni e quando la gente passava vedeva questa testa, questo vaso con tutti i fiori e i limoni e le cose che uscivano e dalla invidia si sono fatti fare la stessa testa per fare i vasi, la stessa testa in ceramica. Chi altra pregunta è, um, chi è il tuo parte favorito di vivere qui in Sicilia? La parte favorita è il bel tempo che ti fa stare sempre di buon umore, sempre perché ci sono sempre queste giornate così, non sempre c'è sto caldo ma c'è sempre il sole ed è una cosa fantastica. E la gente, la gente è molto felice, secondo me questo clima davvero ti permette di vivere bene, stare bene e non c'è tanta criminalità, mm -hmm. si sta bene, davvero. Crees che è molto diverso che altre parti d'Italia? Sì, ad esempio in un'altra parte come Milano, un posto qui non ti offre tutti i lavori che ti offre Milano, ma è una vita molto meno stressante, non c'è la criminalità che c'è a Milano, puoi stare tranquillo, se tuo figlio vuole uscire già da piccola a sei anni, può uscire tranquillo e tornare quando vuole, perché non c'è criminalità. Mm -hmm. 
quindi è molto meglio, non è paragonabile a tante grandi città come Napoli, Roma o Milano. At the time of filming this video it's been almost a week living in Agrigento with Martin's family and it's been one of the best trips I've ever had. Yeah, we're having so much fun and we're enjoying the food, the weather, the people, the people. Right now that we're walking down the streets, we, rec we get recognized by people that, um, like friends of my family, or people that we Shop have Shopkeepers. Yeah, and then they, they always say hi. They are so welcoming, yeah. so warm people. Exactly. I think it has to be with the weather, though. I think so. I can only imagine if we've made this many friends here in a week. Imagine if we're here for months. Yeah, <laughs> and something that we haven't mentioned, mi amor, is the fact that over here, they don't only speak Italian, they also speak Sicilian, that is the dialect. And I'm gonna give you guys an example for saying like um, a beautiful girl. In Italian, it will be a bella ragazza, but in Sicilian, it will be a petra picciotta. Oh. So it sounds completely different. Oh my gosh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I can't understand either. I'm just <laughs> surviving on Spanish and English, as you guys can tell. And it's funny too, because we talked about how warm and welcoming the people are, but when you see the Sicilians talking on the street, they use their hands so much and they, they sound angry. Yeah, they sound not. like they're gonna about to fight. I know, but they're not. That's just how they talk and um, it's kind of funny. It, it, you realize people, it's, it's one of those things where it's like their bark is worse than their bite. They're very, very <laughs> nice people. <laughs> and one other surprising thing we didn't expect to kind of connect the dots here is the similarities between Sicily and Mexico. There's a few different reasons we're gonna mention this. Yeah, both Sicily and Mexico they are related with um, things that they're not as nice. You guys know what I'm saying, you know what I'm, what I'm talking about, and that's very sad. And it's very funny that both Mexico and Sicily, they're such a fantastic uh, place where people is warm, where food is amazing, where weather is great. Where family is important. When family is important and we have that in common. Mm -hmm. I just. Yeah. I cannot stop thinking about that because a lot of people, whenever they think about these two places, they think about the bad thing that sounds in, yeah. the, in the news. And to address the elephant in the room of what we mean, we're referring to the, the famous movie The Godfather. People think mm -hmm. Mafia when they think Sicily a lot of the times. And while that is still present today, um, it's not in a way that you'll see. Right? right? It's yeah. more in terms of extortion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like you as a tourist, it's not something that you have to be get worried about. It's an ugly face of Sicily, but it's not everything of Sicily, exactly, you know? There's yeah. so many things uh, that it's not about that. Exactly. I mean, it's similar things to in Mexico. People think cartels all the time, but you talk to the people here in Sicily and you realize they're ashamed of that. They they don't want to be known for that. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Sicily is an island that has been forgotten about by a lot of the rest of Italy. Mm -hmm. They don't have as much um, resources and funding, and so you don't see as much tourism here. Which is sad because I think they have a great potential uh, for tourism yeah. over here. Definitely. This island, it's amazing for tourism. Just I wish there will be a bigger effort of their tourism board. Yep, yep. But, you know, today here in Agrigento, I'm loving how little tourists we're seeing. We're living the real Sicilian lifestyle. And in speaking of which, we've been to a market already, but one other interesting thing where I think we can learn a lot is going to a supermarket. You can learn a lot of things about a, a place if you go to their supermarket yes. and see what people bought. Okay. Yep. So let's head over there. Vamos. The funny story about here. I went to the movies with my friends, that's 2011, and we watched Harry Potter. <laughs> and after that, we came over here, we grabbed some of the supermarket cars, and one was on top of the car, and one was pushing it, and we have a race over here. We have photos about that, I think we're gonna put one over here. <laughs> we had so much fun with uh, Alessandro. <laughs> Okay. What? what? Uh, okay. okay. There's a lot going on here. Tex-Mex Doritos. Mexicanos. Wow. What even is this? It's not a tortilla chip. I think the people in the U.S. would lose their mind if they see the selection of meats and cheeses that are already sliced up. Imagine the charcuterie boards you could make with all of this. Oh, this looks so good. Martina and I have been living off of sandwiches when we've been here because. I love how they cut up everything and everything's so fresh and delicious. This is how they put the mozzarella with like 
this little water that it comes from, so it keeps fresh. A ton of fresh pasta. And also oh. fresh pesto over here. This store is so funny because the amount of shelf space dedicated to pasta and sweets and cheese and meat, it's insane. It's probably about like three quarters of the store. And then the shelf space for cereal was like two little lines and then for chips, barely anything. I think it tells a lot about where their priorities are in terms of food. And yep, even the Italians, they have frozen pizza. <laughs> This is going to shock some of you guys back home, but what have we found? We found a uh, food for baby. Mm -hmm. And what's so different about it? But this one is from horse. It's very common. Actually, it's not as weird over here in Sicily that people eat uh, horse. Actually, we try it in Catania. Well, I try it in Catania. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's something that is not as weird. <laughs> so for little kids. It was also interesting to see how seafood, another important staple, has taken on forms for easy preparation and other amusing things like pistachio pesto or the abundance of goat milk. Now at this point I'm realizing that Sicily is a whole different ball game from the rest of Italy. But two things remain the same, food and family. So we're gonna meet my family for dinner. They take us to a place called Nusio, where even years later, Martin is running into people he knows. <laughs> Are you famous here? No, the thing is, I knew him whenever he was young, so I used to take him to, to the beach with my cousins, uh -huh. and he remembers me. But oh. he tried to speak uh, English, no, Spanish, <laughs> and he just add an S at the end of every word, so he think he was <laughs> speaking uh, Spanish. First order of business, wine. We asked for Nero Davila, which the waiter advises is Sicily's most important grape variety, and is compared to New World Shiraz's with sweet tannins and plum or peppery flavors. Oh, it's very tasty. Sì, c'è qualche tradizione siciliana che non esista all'Italia? Ha un proverbio che si dice al vicio, no? Si paga alla romana. Alla romana cada che ognuno fa il suo. In Sicilia non esiste questo. In Sicilia se tu sei dentro al bar entra Liz, Giuliana, io pago per tutto. Per tutto. Questo è una cosa tipica di Sicilia. Per questo la, la Sicilia è molto differente dal resto dell'Italia. Pure fisicamente siamo diversi. As the meal goes on, the wine and the olive oil flows while plates and plates of various pastas, seafood dishes and Sicilian specialties come out to us. We're eating good tonight, the Sicilian way. Mm. Rico. Mm -hmm. I was curious, what do you wish the world knew about Sicily? Sicilian is more than mafia, mm -hmm. because we are so famous because mafia, but we have a lot of things to offer here in Sicily. You will find the origin of the life because Sicily is uh, the Greek world, and everything have origin in Greeks. Mm -hmm. And for understand Italy, many people love Venezia, Rome, etc. But the origin of everything is in Sicily. So to know Italy is to know Sicily, and to know a good meal here means you have to walk it off with a passeggiata, the Italian after dinner walk. 10:30 p.m. That's what time we wrap up dinner here in Sicily. Now, Juliana back home would be sleeping, but Juliana here in Sicily with a G, might I add, it's my new name, Juliana. Juliana here in Sicily, she's about to go on a walk with the family. We're gonna work off this meal we just ate because we still have one more meal coming and that's dessert. It's amazing how many people are out like this on a weeknight, but it's sort of charming. Agrigento is a small city with 59,000 people, but on nights like this where I see Martin's family say hi to so many people, it really feels more like a small village. And of course, we end the night at Le Cuspidi, where pistachio gelato is a must. <laughs> I wait eight years for this again. And so, with gelato in hand, this is how you end a day in Sicily. We're gonna leave another video over here so you can see it after this. So long. Travel well. And make the world a neighborhood. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.